Gladys, get my camera. I'm folding your boxers, George. Accountants like all their assets displayed just so. Batman's a handful. Give him some extra strength cough syrup, why don't you? Cool his jets quick. That's what I gave Stanley. He had a bad heart, didn't he? Died of it. Never had a cough, though. Forget the boxers. Get my camera, honey. Hurry. Gotta get anyhow. My yoga show's on. Can't do the moves. Fart too much. <laughs> like to watch, though. Well, I'll see you tomorrow then, Stella. Don't waste cough syrup on that one. Go straight to Drano. Did I hear right? Forget the boxers. Shh. Here? Ivory billed woodpeckers. Supposed to be extinct for God's sakes. I'll be celebrity. I don't see anything. Oh, stop joking, Gladys. This is serious. I'll be world famous. Hurry, hon, get my camera. Uh. Waldo wants to be famous, too. I lent him your camera. He's fishing for walleye in Arkansas. You loan my thousand dollar camera to your unemployed brother? To take pictures of dead fish? He's oh. not taking pictures of dead fish. Well, all right, maybe he is. What am I supposed to do, wait for Waldo to get done stomping around the Ozarks? Oh, here, use my camera. You have a camera? That's a phone. People shoot movies with these. Perverts use them all the time. You remember that show we saw on TV. Hello? Oh, hello. So soon. Seems like just yesterday. Tuesday. Nothing red. Okay, then. Okay, bye. Who is that? George. Do birds have colons? What? I was sure they do. Why? Well, that was your urology doctor. I set your appointment for your colonoscopy next week. That's all right, isn't it? Without asking me? I, I need time to prepare. Well, that's what the laxative is for. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, they're gone. Oh, so close. I'm a nobody again. Oh, doggone it. Oh, I could have been on the cover of Wing and Hoof magazine. I could have been a hot shot. But you are a hot shot. Hmm. You are my wonderful George. I'll throw some rye bread at the edge of the yard. They'll come back. Eat insects, Gladys, not designer bread. Well, then the insects will eat the bread and the peckers will come back for the insects. Yeah. Looks like we have new neighbors. I can't deal with this now. First my birds, then my colon. Now new neighbors. I think they're Indian. Oh, oh great. Seminoles or Apaches? India the country. I see a woman with a red dot on her forehead. An old lady and a young man. No kids. Too much to hope for. What were you hoping for? 
that our neighbors would be like us. Do you mean Episcopalian? I don't know. You know. Wasps. White Anglo-Saxon whatchamacallits. Change is good. Maybe I'll learn to cook Indian style. For myself, of course. I know you don't like foreign food. Even Chinese, and that is practically American. Where are they? Gone. They must have gone inside. Oh, come in, come in. Greetings. Greetings. I'm Dr. Narinder Singh. This is my wife, Karishma. Pleased to make your acquaintance. Weren't there three of you? Yes. My nanny ma, that's my wife's grandmother. She's resting. Her name's Emila. I'm Gladys Oberhoff, and this is my husband, George. Say, before you unpack, why don't you join us for lunch? I just made a nice pot roast. Pot roast? From Mother Cow. We are from the Punjab region. We are Hindu. We do not eat the sacred cow. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to insult your Hinduism. We are holy ourselves. Episcopalian. Mm. And carnivores. Holy Episcopalian carnivores. Uh, what profession do you labor in, Mr. George? I'm an accountant. Ah, a man of numbers. A most noble non-polluting profession. Mm. Uh, do you go to business, Mistress Gladys? Oh, no. I have my hands full with George. Mm -hmm. How about you, Karishma? Mm -hmm. Do you go to work, or do you have to stay home and take care of your grandmother? Oh, my nanny needs no help. Oh, I back home at the Chatbir Zoo, she was the only female the elephant Defecata would allow in the enclosure. My husband does not wish for me to seek employment. No. Back home, I was a botanist. So, uh, are you a real doctor or a paper one? A fish veterinarian, specializing in the smaller exotics. Oh, yeah. that's good. If Walla comes back with a sick walleye, Narinder here can make it better. I'm not familiar with a Waldo, but I certainly know my way around a walleye. You might say I'm in the swim of things. <laughs> I instruct a class at the university called When Good Fish Go Bad. Um, many thanks for your offer of a meal, Mistress Gladys. Perhaps you'll be our guests this evening. We'd be most honored. If your religion allows for the consumption of wild fowl, that is. Uh, well, I, I don't think that's come up in Bible study, but... Uh, weren't we supposed to go over to your cousin's tonight? Nope. We're as free as a bird. Oops. Uh, no, we, we would love to. Excellent. Eight o'clock, then. Eight? Eight it is. <laughs> See you later. <clears throat> I can't wait till eight. I'm going to starve. Come inside. I'll make you a nice cow sandwich. Then you can take me to the store. I need some rye bread for your peckers. Ivory bills.
so nice. They're just beans. Not the beans, the Sings, our new neighbors. No. He thinks you're a non-polluting man. <laughs> Hasn't been around you when you had a plate of those in you. They're weirdos. Grandma scooped elephant poop, the wife's unemployed, and he operates on fish. And why did you say yes to dinner? Our code, remember? When I br bring up your cousin, that means no. Why can't you remember? George, I can't remember half your codes. Anyway, what's the harm? Hello. We have low-sodium Munster cheese. Would you like some? Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. My, don't we have a hungry little bugger. Do you remember when the Hendersons served us that alligator meat? How did you describe the taste? Like chicken. And then Aunt Zelda served us those possum pies at Thanksgiving. Yep, chicken. Well, there then, case closed. Good afternoon. They sure do like processed meat. Mm. So there was this old Irish traffic cop that got sent to check an accident in Brooklyn, and he sees the five cars all lined up run into each other. And he looks at the first three, and he's writing tickets, and he gets to the last two, and he looks at the two cars, and there's a rabbi in car number four and a priest in car number five. So he looks at the rabbi again, he walks by him, goes to the priest, and he says, Now tell me, Father, how fast was the rabbi going when he backed into you? <laughs> <laughs> So little Murray comes home from school all out of breath. His mother says, what happened to you? He says, oh, I ran home from school in the back of the bus, but I saved $2. She says, you should have ran in the back of the cab. You would have saved $10. <laughs> <laughs> Don't eat, George. <laughs> Don't eat, George. <laughs> what? Hello, Father. Hello, Father. Hello, Father. Look, it's Mrs. Dombrowski. You know, the one who lives in the big yellow house? Gladys, you saved me a phone call. Some crook stole my cabbage, my onions, and my eggplants from my garden today. But I reported it to the neighborhood watch. Are you sure it just wasn't raccoons? Yeah, they're dressed for the job. <laughs> a word to the wise. Keep a close eye on your garden, especially the eggplant. <laughs> they're aphrodisiacs, you know. See ya. Bye. George, we're right in front of the squash. Do you remember that grocery store on Route 54? <laughs> I was in the produce aisle, squeezing the honeydews and the sugar babies. You walked by and stole my heart. You remember? Sure. Best day of my life. <laughs> okay, are we done here? I need to get home and Check my woodpeckers. Ten items only, sir. Oh, Mr. Walters, it's me, Gladys. Those are my groceries. Okay. I hope you'll be in church on Sunday. I couldn't possibly sing Amazing Grace without you. You play that organ thing. 
I'm cool master of the chorus. Yeah, yeah, whatever. you two been together? 20 to life. Ah, oh, you need a better lawyer. Could you step down here for me, sir? Keep your hands where I can see them. We don't keep much cash around the house. Please, please, don't hurt me. I I'm your neighborhood watch captain. Oh. You're not used to seeing someone in authority with tats, are you? These are just the ones you could see. Do you want something? One of your neighbors has reported the theft of some cruciferous vegetables, one cabbage, three eggplant, and two Walla Walla onions. Ring any bells, mister? Do I look like I know about salads? I'm not here to speculate. Just the facts, man. I don't have any facts. Well, if you should remember something after I leave, shoot me an email. You are computer literate, right? No sign of them. I'm going to sprinkle these breadcrumbs at the edge of the yard oh, for man. those white striped birds of yours. Ivory, build, Gladys. Whatever. I just don't want them too close to the house with all this fiber in them. Yo, if you see my birds. Where are your bird pictures, George? I want to show the Sings what a great photographer you are. They're on the nightstand. Sure they're great. I used a real camera. Gladys, maybe I'm imagining it, but I don't think people in general like me. I always seem to say and do the wrong thing, and I don't know what to do about it. Georgie, Georgie, if they knew you like I know you, they would love you. Like I do. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I did not anticipate company on our first night, my husband. How quickly you and Nanima pulled together tonight's meal. All within a one kilometer radius. Such a bountiful neighborhood. I felt compelled to extend the invitation to our neighbors after refusing the offer for food. A point of honor. I do understand my husband. I see breadcrumbs at the edge of the yard. Could trapping game be a local custom? Even for a professional person? All is so different here. We dress with grace and beauty, whereas they look prepared to picnic at the drop of a pin. Some women at university, though born in Mother India, have abandoned our ways. Guard against this, my wife. If I observe a deviation, I shall say the number five. Five, as in a Hindu's five daily duties, I will remember. Now don't mention the stolen vegetables. I don't want the Sings to think we live in a crime-ridden subdivision. Hi over there! Krishna has set up our meal in the kitchen. But before we partake, Mr. George, join me in a glass of palm wine as we enjoy this wonderful moon. You men do your bonding thing. I'm going to go and give Karishma her gift and show Granny what a wonderful photographer you are. <laughs> but wait, Gladys, don't leave us here alone.
Well, Mr. George Oberloff, may I address you as just George? Knock yourself out. This is a yes? Oh, what a magnificent moon tonight. It reminds me of a summer's night of my youth. I'm from Chandigarh in northwestern India. My house was just a pebble toss from the shiny waters of Sukhna Lake. As a young boy, my mother Anju would put me to sleep at night and she would sing. Chanda Mama Lavi, Jabili Lavi, Kondeki Lavi, Koto Puto Teve, Bandeke Reve, Bante Pulo Teve, Terra Midi Lave, Tena Puto Teve. Come moon, come sweet moon, come over the hill. Bring a million flowers, bring them all for the baby's delight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is bright tonight. Mm -hmm. On nights like this, my mom used to sing, I see the moon, the moon sees me, down to the shade of the old oak tree. Please let the light that shines on me shine on the one I love. Get me a beer, Georgie boy. Different sides of the world and our mothers were singing to us about the same moon. Maybe we have more in common than I thought. <coughs> so, Narinder, how do you operate on a fish? Most quickly. <laughs> oh, that's a joke, right? No, but, but how do you do it? I mean, do you put them in a big old tank and jump in? Like a reality program. Me wearing bright yellow bathing trunks. Oxygen tank on my back <laughs> and oversized goggles. No, no, no. So, you take the fish out of the tank? We pump water over the gills, containing anesthetic. Why, just yesterday, I removed a tumor from a prized koi. It took me almost one hour. Did the fish make it? It is most fine. It is lighter by one mass. Its owner is lighter by several thousand dollars. <laughs> what? Thousands for a fish? You would spend money on a puppy, but not a guppy? Oh yeah, no brainer. So, Narinder, what do you think of Americans? And be honest. You all love plastic. <laughs> Everything is plastic and disposable. We value permanence. Here, you keep reinventing things. It's most unsettling. What else? If I may speak without offending, American women are quite outspoken. <laughs> Unlike our women, who appreciate the virtue of silence. My advice? Don't let Karishma out of your sight. <laughs> She's a traditional Hindu wife. No concern there. What do you think of my gifts from neighbor Gladys' husband? I'm surprised to be liking them so. <laughs> I was just about to explain to Mr. George about the five daily duties. Five. 
such an important number. Next week, Mistress Gladys is taking me to her ladies' book group meeting, where we'll be discussing why men come from Mars and women from somewhere else. <laughs> Five. Must be your signal, huh? Gladys doesn't pay any attention to my signals either. Oh dear. Oh dear! I have a killer headache. Let's go home now. What? I'm having a good time. Narinder's an interesting guy. He's not half bad. You go ahead. I'll be there in a minute. They're serving cabbage, eggplant, and onions. As in Mrs. Dombrowski's garden. Okay, something else. They're also serving several crow-sized birds with... Stay calm. They have light-colored beaks. So what's your point? Oh, no. Oh, no! You're the most unusual couple. I've already broken some Episcopalian taboo. Gladys, those aren't my woodpeckers. Those are snipe. Well, what about the stolen cabbage, kinky eggplants, and onions? Stolen? We have stolen nothing. I can explain. A neighbor reported the vegetables as stolen. But I told the tattooed woman that Nanny bought the produce from a boy standing in the garden in question. Seems like little Larry didn't tell his mother he sold the vegetables and kept the money. <laughs> Upon interrogation by the tattooed woman, the boy confessed. His mother is upset because of her son's untruth. Mm. And because he also now wants to get a tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> well, George, your birds are still out there then. That's great. Mm -hmm. Most regrettable. Nanny Man noticed a man selling fish head and snipe from a caller at the subdivision entrance when we drove in this morning. Mm. On her way to purchase the fowl, Nanny Ma spotted the birds and photographed them with her cell phone camera. Yes, yeah, she recognized their importance. She uploaded the picture to the Endangered Species Office, not knowing that you had a prior claim. She knew how rare they were? How? She was the elephant pooper scooper. Oh, no. She was a zoo's director, a renowned ornithologist. Have you not heard of Dr. Emila Palavel? That scrawny woman, the Dr. Palavel? A man from a wing and hoof publication called. They are coming to photograph Nanny for their cover story. Cell phone granny gets the ivories. Oh. Oh, don't die on me now, George. <laughs> but I, I deserve to be on the cover of wing and hoof. Aced out by a dried up prune of a woman. Oh no. You are right. She does have some serious skin care issues. Here comes Nanny Ma now. <laughs> Feeling any better this morning? I will after I get some bacon, eggs, and pancakes in me. Someone is forgetting their countdown to their colonoscopy. How about some nice green jello? Okay. I can handle this. Gladys, I had an epiphany last night. There's room in this world for all kinds of deviates. That's very big of you, George. You know, Granny Ermilla really liked your nature photos. She said that she would recommend them to the magazine. All except for one. Which one? The one with the squirrels copulating in the foreground. I didn't know that squirrels had such large... Gladys! Now what? More new neighbors? Let's go see who's moving in. Oh, no.